in my second last throw, it's just like everything just hit. I just like, I was really white in the release to the right, just like could push it really far out. The grip was perfect. And it just, it just went really far. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> You, you did that. You were only 24 years old, which is a massive throw. Um, and how, you know, what, what did that lead up to? Like, what was the conditions you set that at home there in Reykjavik, right? Um, yeah. So, yeah, go ahead and let me yeah, know. Uh, <clears throat> the the uh, 2020 was pretty uh, bad year for me, except the Icelandic record, of course. Right. <laughs> Uh, it started off, uh, we were training outside in the snow and in the rain just all the time, always around uh, freezing temperatures. And I ended up uh, injuring my groin, if I remember correctly. And it was, uh, I was injured mostly the whole summer. Oh, wow. So I couldn't do a lot. And okay. then when I finally like could throw, I mean, we tried competing a lot and I wasn't throwing that well. like most part of the summer okay then i just uh, maybe what do you call it just two days before the Icelandic record it finally like everything clicked together like my lower body was finally a little bit ahead of the upper body and that was like connecting on the throws i thought i had a terrible practice but then seeing the marks day after uh, two days later i was like okay maybe it was a really good practice maybe like i was throwing probably constantly around 63 four meters in just in the call that's really good for me in the practice since i usually just throw around 59 meters all the time always and okay. i've been doing that for the last <laughs> like six years or so <laughs> okay <laughs> And yeah, and then just two, uh, what do you call it? Uh, two days later, it was a Wednesday, if I remember correctly. Uh, Pieter asked, asked me if we should uh, have the meet. He asked me at like 10 in the morning, I think, because it was like raining and the wind was blowing. It was, wasn't was like exactly the correct uh, like wind direction for our you know, disco circles. Mm -hmm. But, but I was, I was feeling good. And I, I just said, yes, I was like hyped up for the meet. And I started, I'm in college during, doing sports science and I had a basketball class. So I warmed up a little bit doing basketball. Okay. And then I went straight to the, what do you call it? Field, mm -hmm. just warmed up a little bit. The wind was blowing straight from the right. Okay. Mm, but we also had like we have really tall trees okay the, like a whole right side where we were throwing so inside of the circle and maybe maybe i don't know maybe eight meters off the ground it was kind of cold it's like no wind because of the wind the, the trees were blocking it so you have to like throw it really high and far so <laughs> so wind did anything because I was the only one that did well in this competition. We were like five, six people throwing, I think so. Okay. Or seven, I'm not sure. But it's like it's like the wind didn't help you anything, except maybe at the 55 or 60 meter mark. Uh -huh. I, I'm not sure, but okay. it looks like that on the video. Right. But I mean, yeah, I had been throwing pretty, or I felt like I was throwing pretty bad like during the last weeks before the Icelandic record and okay. and the meet started off well I threw I think I threw 60 something in the beginning maybe 65 60. yeah yeah oh, okay yeah yeah I opened up with a little bit less I think 61 or two I was really happy with that and then I threw 61 five something I don't remember correctly a little a bit PR. it was yeah. PR yeah it was okay. a little bit better than my mm -hmm. old PR and then in my second last throw, it's just like everything just hit. I just like, I was really white in the release to the right. Just like could push it really far out. The grip was perfect. And it just, it just went really far. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. It's like, 
I couldn't even see how far it went. It's like it was super far. And and this was my fifth throw and my sixth throw. That was that was not shorter, I think. It's just it was a really bad throw, but the wind just took it just ridiculously far and way out of sector and I felt it. It was so we didn't even measure it. It was probably around 69 or more, but we don't know. It it doesn't matter. I, okay. I'm really happy with 69, 35. Yeah. Especially after the whole season. <laughs> right. So <laughs> kind of crap. <laughs> and then just three days later, you threw an, another 65 51. And yeah. and so coach, you obviously so from the coach's standpoint, um, you know, you decide, hey, you want to throw in a meet and you kind of just impromptu. How do you like, obviously you could see he's throwing well. So you say, hey, let's let's get a meet. And here, he, you know, he's going to class, comes out, jumps in, throws 69 meters. So how, how did you as the coach like, you know, what's how, how was the preparation and 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 how is it? You know, what are you doing at that point when you see he's on and how are you, you know, coaching him through the meet so that he just continues to go and hits a, a massive throw? Well, um, like like Winnie said, it had been a problematic summer, mm -hmm. but I felt that he, it was coming together. And uh, and on that big day, uh, the the difference between him and the other throwers was that his mindset was... I'm going to throw far today. I'm not going to let the weather inf infect me at all. Mm -hmm. So, so he managed to, he managed to, you know, get full speed through the, through the throw. Ob obviously this is his fastest throw mm -hmm. ever. And, uh, and uh, yeah, what I, what I try to do is, just to create opportunities and always stay positive. Right. It's a, it's a, it's, it's a, I think that's the biggest quality a coach has to have. That's great opportunities uh, and, and, and build up the athlete. Right. Yeah. 